it's just gonna be so cozy. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel for another video. My name is Diana and I am a knitwear designer coming to you from Montreal. You can find me online as Diana Walla on Ravelry, as Cake and Vikings on Instagram, or over on my blog, Paper Tiger. We also have a Paper Tiger Ravelry group and I will link all of those things in the description box below. Today's video is going to be a little different. If you watched my last quick video, you'll know a couple of things. And the first of those things is that I am working on more videos for what you could call my more educational series. And the second thing is that I attended the Edinburgh Yarn Festival last weekend. So in the meantime, while I'm working on those sort of more involved videos, I thought I would bring you something a little different. I did have some requests from some of you to do a more uh, typical kind of what's on my needles sort of video to show you what projects I'm working on. Um, there are a few reasons I haven't done this before. Um, as a designer, I have sort of um, work knitting where I have my, you know, pattern samples and things that I'm working on and I can't always show those to you. And then I also have my personal knitting. And because I have both of those and the work projects often take priority, um, sometimes my personal projects sit around for a long time, they take me a while to get through. Um, so it just doesn't work as well for the typical, you know, sort of format you see on YouTube where people are sharing projects every week and the progress they've made because I just don't always have that much I can show. Um, but because I was just in Edinburgh and I decided I only wanted to take personal projects with me to try and make it feel a little bit more like a vacation, um, I thought I would do a little bit of a What's on My Needles Edinburgh edition, um, and that might be fun to share with you. So here are some of the things you can expect from today's video. I'm going to show you which projects I brought to Edinburgh, and I have both finished objects and works in progress. I'm also going to chat a little bit about travel knitting in general because I do get questions anytime I'm talking about travel knitting and um, I figure this is a good chance to address some of those questions. If there's time, I might show you what I picked up at EYF from the marketplace. And at the end of the video, I'll have some vlog type footage from my time in Edinburgh. Now, I want to warn you and be very clear up front. I'm not calling this an Edinburgh Yarn Festival vlog. Um, for one thing, I didn't actually take a lot of footage at the festival itself. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, I'm going to point you over to some um, existing vlogs that are a lot better and will give you a much clearer idea of what the festival itself is like. Um, in particular, Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast has a really wonderful vlog that shows more of the festival in the marketplace. Um, and as well, Grace from Babbles Traveling Yarns and Heidi of Books and Cables were both daily vlogging while they were in Edinburgh. So you'll find the links to those below. They will give you a better idea of the festival if that's what you're looking for. My footage is more actually like the quiet moments surrounding the festival because I wasn't very good about getting my camera out at the festival. Um, but you'll also see a lot of the progress on this sweater, you know, which I'll be talking about in a moment. So just want to be very clear before we get into it all what you can expect from that. Now that you have an overview of what I'll be covering in this video, uh, I will be timestamping each section in the description box. And what that means is that if you're not interested in watching a particular section, for example, if you um, you're, you want to see the Edinburgh footage, but you don't necessarily care about the works in progress or you know what I bought or anything like that, you don't want to hear about travel knitting, you can skip around very easily because there are clickable timestamps in the description box. So you can just go down there, expand the box, look for the section you want, and click on the timestamp. It will take you right there. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what I've been knitting. I want to dive straight in because I know a lot of you are very eager to hear about this sweater. And this is my first finished object from what's on my needles, the Edinburgh edition, although it's obviously off my needles. Um, this is the Lapwing Sweater by Marie Wallen. Um, it's a pattern available for individual purchase on Ravelry. Uh, I've been sharing my progress over on Instagram and really wanted to finish it for the festival, so I'm really happy that I did. By the time I left for Edinburgh, I had finished all of the knitting on the body, I had finished the knitting of the sleeves, I'd cut open my steeks and I had seamed on the first sleeve. So when I got to Edinburgh, I still had to seam on the second sleeve and then pick up stitches for the neckline. I nearly had a finished sweater. So because I was determined to finish it while I was in Edinburgh, I did take it to the big knit night on the Thursday night, the day that I got in, uh, and I seamed my second sleeve onto the sweater at the knit night. <laughs> 
I happened to wake up early on Friday morning, so I picked up the stitches for the neckband then and knit my little ripping and blocked the sweater before I headed over to the festival. So some of the details of the construction of this sweater. I did make a lot of modifications to this pattern and I've put some relatively detailed notes on my project page on Ravelry, so I'll be sure to link that as well. But I wanted to talk you through a couple of the things um, here. So the biggest thing is that the pattern calls for knitting flat back and forth in pieces and seaming everything together. Now, obviously I did do some seaming, but I wasn't about to do all of this fine gauge color work in, you know, back and forth. I want to do it in the round. So I knit the sweater bottom up in the round with steaks for the armholes and for the neck shaping here. Um, so I added the steaks. I also made some changes to the neck shaping to make it a little bit wider and a little bit deeper. So mine's a little bit more like a boat neck than in the pattern. I think it's closer into the neck on the sides. The pattern did call for some sloped shoulder shaping, which I decided to leave out. And I'm really glad I did because uh, it led to one of my favorite details, one of my favorite happy accidents of this sweater. And that is the the motif on the shoulder seam right here just happens to line up perfectly. This is bigger than the motif is elsewhere on the sweater. You can see here it's just two rows of the diamonds, whereas on the shoulder I've got three, but that's just, I couldn't have done better if I'd planned it, um, and I'm just thrilled with that little detail. I did have to do some math and calculations to uh, figure out where to start my steaks and all of that kind of stuff, um, but again, I've detailed that process on my project notes. As for the yarn, I did use different yarn than what was called for in the pattern. Um, Marie's pattern sample uses the Little Grey Sheep Hampshire 4 ply, which is a really lovely hand-dyed non-superwash British wool, um, but I opted to go for something different. I picked up four skeins of this yarn in Isolde's birthday sale last year. This is Celia from Hillesvog, so it's their fingering weight pelt wool. So this one is in the colorway Grün or Grass Green. I'm absolutely in love with this color. And this is a gray base with the color over dyed on it, um, which is part of why you have all of that beautiful depth. So obviously I didn't use all four. Uh, I think I might have bought extra yarn just because I knew I would be making modifications and I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. I did use about um, two and three quarters of a skein. So I have, a quarter of a skein left over and a full skein as well. Then my contrasting color is this yarn. This is Rauma Lamelgarn. This is their lamb's wool. It's sort of a light fingering weight. Um, I think that you could use either this yarn or Fienul if you wanted to combine with Solia pretty easily. But I thought that these would pair really nicely together. But yeah, I thought they'd make a nice combination, and the the Rama came from Espace Tricot here in Montreal. Um, once again, this is what I had left over. I bought three um, skeins of this initially, and this is 50 grams instead of 100 grams, um, so overall it was a lot less than the green yarn. Um, I think I have about three quarters of this skein left, something like that. If you want to know more about those yarns, you can check out my Norwegian wool video um, where I talk about both of those companies in a lot more detail, but they're both favorites. I am so happy with the finished sweater, and I did get to wear it both Saturday and Sunday at the festival, which I was really excited about. I first started this sweater at Twist Festival last August, so it was kind of fun to finish it at another festival surrounded by nitty friends. Um, it was just pretty fun. This is one of my most ambitious projects to date. It's knit at a pretty fine gauge. I think it's 32 stitches in four inches or 10 centimeters, and it's all over color work, so it, uh, it's quite a lot of knitting. Um, and my row gauge is a lot more compact than in the pattern as well, which means that I had more rounds to knit to get the length that I wanted. So yeah, it took quite a while, but it was fun to work on something that sort of needed so much investment. Um, it's been a long time since I've had a project like that, and it I feel like it makes the finished sweater that much more rewarding and I'm that much more proud of it as well. I'm going to cheat and show you one more finished object even though I actually finished knitting this back in January and that is because I did take it with me to the festival because we were launching the pattern that week. And it is this and this is the Marchmont cowl. 
So let me see if I can put it on. These greens are a little clashy, but just so you can see what it looks like. So like I said, this is the Marchmont Cowl. It's knit with Daughter of a Shepherd, Heritage, Four Ply, and Jill Draper, Mohonk Light. So for the past few years, um, Daughter of a Shepherd has been having a little pop-up at Jill Draper's Open Studio in Kingston, Rhinebeck Weekend, and vice versa. Uh, Jill has been popping up in Daughter of a Shepherd's booth at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So they have this fun little transatlantic yarn friendship, and they have been doing collaborations with designers for these festivals, for these events, um, launching patterns that use both of their yarns. And I do think that they go very beautifully together. So I was really excited when um, last October um, they asked me if I would be interested in doing a pattern for EYF this year. So it's a fingering weight cowl. It's a construction I've used a couple of times before. So you start with a provisional cast on, you knit a long tube in the round, and then at the end you graph the ends together. So you get this long seamless tube with no wrong side. So there's no strands, no floats to get caught on anything. Um, it's a pretty fun construction and it's so wearable when it's done. So as I said, I used the Daughter of a Shepherd Heritage 4 Ply. This is um, the fingering weight version of Rachel's signature Hebridean and Svarplus blend. Um, so this is the beautiful undyed natural color of the wool. And for the contrasts, I used um, Jill Draper Make Stuff Mohonk Light, which is a fingering weight lamb's wool in the, the colorways Bearing and Moss. And I love these colors. I think they're beautifully springy. Um, and I think that the dark Hebridean wool just sets them off so beautifully. So I'm really, really happy with how that turned out. I'm also happy with how I managed to sort of melt the pattern from one color into another across the cowl. I think that I couldn't be uh, more proud of that. And it was so much fun to knit. So that's the Marchmont cowl. Next up is a work in progress. I did want to bring something that was a little bit uh, more of a small project that would be good for social knitting because I knew I'd be doing a fair bit of that. And that project um, is living in this bag. Um, I'm turning into a little bit of a Daughter of a Shepherd fangirl in this video because this is also uh, a Daughter of a Shepherd bag. This is one of the limited edition bags that Daughter of a Shepherd and Woolen Flower did. They have non-limited edition ones as well, and I also have one of those, but I couldn't resist when I saw these. So living inside this bag is a pair of socks. I have an almost finished pair of Kia socks. So Kia Socks is a pattern by Dawn Henderson, who is Dawn.Landex on Instagram. This is a pattern she has offered for free, and it was something that I really wanted to cast on for because of where the inspiration came from. Um, I'm actually going to give you that in Dawn's own words because that sums it up really nicely. Dawn writes, this pattern was directly inspired by conversations within the online knitting community involving race, diversity, inclusion, and representation amongst knitters. It serves as a gentle reminder that we all deserve to be heard, to be seen, to feel safe, and to be treated well in this space. Peace and happy knitting. So you may have seen these socks on social media um, already, and Dawn is hosting, I believe it's a year-long knit-along called the Kia Socks Cal. Um, so I'm obviously taking part. I am knitting mine with uh, yarn from Knitting It Up in her Monkland base, which is 85% superwash merino and 15% nylon. It's the Doctor Who colorway, which was a special one-off colorway she did as part of a collaboration with um, Tiffany from Twill and Print. So Tiffany made a progress keeper and an enamel pin and Annie did the colorway. I like this base a lot. There is a little bit of pooling with the color, uh, which I don't normally love, but if you're gonna have pooling, maybe have it on a Doctor Who sock, because I can just sort of see, you know, the TARDIS just spinning around through space and time. Um, but it's otherwise, it's a really beautiful colorway. And I think I'm just to the toe decreases on the second sock, so I'm about to start decreasing. So these should be finished relatively soon. Last up is one more work in progress, and that has been living in this bag, which is a bag that Garthenor made in collaboration with the artist Alex Collins. There's a lot of maker collaborations happening in this video, but this bag actually came as part of gift from um, 
Lisa and Melissa from Miss Best Trico when I left the store and I no longer was working there. Living in this bag is this. This is the Viola hat or Viola, I'm not sure how she says it, by Noriko Ho. Um, and as you can see, I'm almost finished with this as well. It's a really beautiful but simple cabled hat and I've been wanting to make it for a couple of months and I can't wait to wear it. Um, I met Noriko when I was still living in Seattle because that's where she's based. Like I said, I've been wanting to make it for a couple of months, so I picked up this yarn earlier this month at Skein Sisters in Australia um, with this pattern in mind. The yarn I'm using is Cotton Merino and it's by Katya Yarns and they've done a rebrand. This is one of, is the European yarn company. There's what the new label looks like. Um, but this is a blown yarn and that's a name that refers to the structure of the yarn. There's a cotton tube which is basically like a chainette or like an I-cord and then the wool is blown into the tube. So you get this very fuzzy, very interesting looking yarn and that's because when the color of the tube is different from the color of the wool, you get this really cool um, effect. So I was curious to see how that would knit up in cables and I'm quite liking the fabric. I think it's very interesting um, and it's gonna look really nice when it's finished. See, I might even be able to try this on without losing any stitches. Yeah, so there you go. You can see I'm about to start the crown shaping. Um, it's very cozy. It's probably not going to be the warmest hat because the nature of a blown yarn means that it's very light, it's very airy, and the wind goes straight through it. Um, but that's okay. I have a lot of warmer hats already. This will be a nice one for sort of lighter days when I don't need something quite so bulky. Um, and it's going to be really beautiful. Other blown yarns you might have encountered would be... Um, in particular, Wolfolk Luft is very popular. Uh, if you know Melissa um, from Miss Bass Trico's Turtle Dove sweater, she used the Luft for that. Um, also, Ilemani's Amelie, and also Drops Air. And that's a wrap on um, works in progress and finished objects. Um, but some of you, I'm sure, are wondering, how did I take all of this with me? I tend to only travel with hand luggage when I can get away with it, and that was true for this trip as well. So I had um, my unfinished sweater, the two millimeter needles I needed for the neck, uh, as well as the hat and the socks, all in my hand luggage. So when it comes to flying with knitting or knitting needles, I've personally never had an issue with that. I've never had needles taken away from me. Um, that's not a guarantee. Uh, it's always up to the discretion of the security agency. Um, so in the US, that's TSA, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Even though in most places, knitting needles are explicitly allowed, um, I used to carry a printout of the TSA website page that said that you could bring knitting needles. It is ultimately always up to the security agent who is checking your bag. So yeah, while it's not a guarantee, I've never had issues. I know a lot of knitters who have never had issues. Some people do have stories about things being taken. Um, one of the ways to get around that worry, if you are worried about your needles being taken at airport security, is to travel with interchangeable needles. You do not need to have a whole set to be able to do that because most sets allow you to uh, most brands allow you to purchase individual needle tips and cables. So if there are a couple of uh, sizes that you want to travel with, um, you can get the tips that you need for that project and the cables in whatever length you need. You can pop them in your bag. And then if they want to take your needles at security, you can unscrew them from the cables and still have all of your live stitches safe. So that's what I tend to do when I'm flying. And if I'm feeling really anxious about it, um, especially if I have spare tips with me or anything like that, I might pop those in my pencil case that I travel with. I personally don't think that's usually necessary. Um, generally, I don't feel like security normally bats an eyelid at, you know, the knitting that I'm carrying. Very occasionally they will pull my bag aside and want to look at it and see if there's anything sharp. Um, but it's generally never an issue. With all that being said, I do feel the need to acknowledge that uh, when I go through security, I do so with a certain amount of privilege. I am a white cisgendered woman, which means that my security experience is often a lot easier than it is for other people, unfortunately. So if you are someone without those privileges, um, your mileage may vary greatly. 
I just think that's something to keep in mind. I'm going to link to an Instagram post um, that I did about a year ago when I was traveling through Asia. I posted about travel knitting and I think I asked for people's experiences with traveling with knitting and there were a lot of comments on that post with a lot of different experiences and some of these issues were raised and if you are interested in the discussion of traveling with knitting I think it's a really interesting thread to check out and just read through the comments. You do not have to be a member of Instagram just to read it. Um, it's going to be visible to everybody so if you're interested in that I will have that link below. But security aside, I also think about um, the types of projects I want to bring when I'm traveling because sometimes you want, you know, you have different projects for different things. So in this case, I brought this sweater because I knew I wanted to finish it. Um, and I was a crazy person and worked on seaming a sleeve. I did mattress stitch in the dark at night. But aside from that, um, that was just me being stubborn. The other projects I brought were with the type of traveling I was doing in mind. So like I said, I wanted social knitting. So I brought my Kia socks because they're very easy to knit on. But yeah, that's why I brought a sock project because I knew that would be really good for all of the social knitting that would be happening. And then I also brought the uh, Viola hat because I thought it would be really fascinating airplane knitting. I get a little bored with socks on long flights because they're very same same. That's what makes them so good for social knitting. Um, but if I'm sitting on an airplane for six or more hours, then I want something that's going to be a little bit more interesting. And so simple cables felt like a really approachable thing for that. So I could work on it at the airport, I could work on it on the airplane. Um, and you'll even see in the footage a little bit later that I worked on it on the tram into town as well after my red eye flight. So it was a nice mix of projects. It was sort of a, a big scale one to finish, but it was simple knitting to do. Um, it was a small social project, so socks, and then it was something a little more interesting for the flight itself. That being said, I don't always pack multiple projects for a trip, especially a trip that was only maybe five days or something like that. Um, but of course, Edinburgh going to the yarn festival is a sort of different thing. There's knitting happening everywhere, there's yarn everywhere, um, so it was nice to have a variety. But for example, just before Edinburgh, I was traveling for about three and a half weeks. I was in LA first, and then I was in Australia for about two weeks. And when we went to Australia, I took one thing, and that one thing was a sweater project. Um, it was a pattern sample, so, but it was just one adult sweater. That was the only thing I took for a two week trip. So it just depends what I want to pack, what I want to knit on. Um, but I think it's a really good thing if you're planning to bring knitting to you know, sort of think about and try and anticipate what types of situations you'll be in on this trip and what type of knitting is good for that, you know? So if you do need to get through, say, a lot of stockinette on the body of a sweater and you normally find that to be a slog, if that's the only thing you bring on a trip, you know, and you wanna knit, then you're gonna work on it and you're gonna get a lot more of that sweater done. So you can be strategic about it too. I would love to hear some of your thoughts about travel and knitting, um, either the security side of things or how you decide what you're going to pack, um, anything like that. So feel free to share those in the comments. And I, I expect that everybody else is probably pretty interested in that as well. So I'm going to very quickly take you through um, the things that I brought home from the festival. Like I said, if that kind of thing is not your bag, that's totally fine. Just head down to the description box, find the timestamp for the next section and click on that. But I know a lot of people are interested in that, so I wanted to include it. So I think the first thing I bought wasn't actually yarn at all, but it was this wrap. So this is a really generous sized wrap. I spent some time at the Kaylee on Friday night wearing it around my shoulders like this, um, sort of traditional shawl wrap style, but it also works quite nicely as a scarf. And I'm intending to wear it like this a lot inside my coat um, in the winter. Uh, this is meant to replace a scarf that I've been wearing for several years, which is just an acrylic scarf that I purchased at H&M on a trip where I forgot to pack a scarf in December. Go figure. But so this wrap, this scarf is 100% wool and it is in fact, let me see if I can find the little tag. And it is, in fact, from Ardolanish. Ardolanish is the same place where this fabric was woven. Um, I didn't realize that when I bought this wrap, but now I'm even more glad I did. 
Um, so I believe the same thing is true of this fabric, that the colors are um, done with natural dyes. I'll hold it up a little closer so you can see you've got these, um, you've got these stripes of color running through this fabric. So it's a really beautiful, neutral sort of thing um, with a really generous size. When you, This is the actual, this is the whole width of it when you unfold it all the way. And it's quite long as well. I can't even fit it all in. Um, so yeah, it's sort of half blanket, half scarf, which is my favorite kind of scarf. So again, Ardalanish, they are on the Isle of Mull in Scotland. Um, and I was hoping to pick up something like this at the festival, and I am really glad I found it. I think I bought it on the Friday. Um, and yeah, it's just going to be so cozy. Next up, I actually bumped into the two ladies from Amirisu magazine, the Japanese um, knitting pattern magazine, and I was really excited to meet them in person. Um, they were so sweet and they gave me a couple of little gifts. So one of the things they gave me uh, was two skeins of their own yarn. If you did not know, Amirisu is making yarn now. So this is called Parade. It is a beautiful blend of wool, cotton, silk, and linen. It's 60% wool, 20% cotton, 10% silk, and 10% linen. So it's a really beautiful, um, it's a fingering weight. It's a nice blend for sort of warmer weather, spring, transitional seasons, and maybe even summer, depending on where you live. And it is delightfully soft. Um, I think this is so beautiful. I am planning to use it for a design, and um, I just, I'm so grateful. So thank you to Meri and Tokuko of Amirisu. I, um, I love it. I can't wait to knit with this yarn. One of the things that I was excited to check out was um, in Isolde's booth on the Friday and Saturday, I think, um, Ocean by the Sea was having a pop-up. If you don't know Ocean, um, she does natural dyed yarns and they are beautiful soft colors. But her shop updates have been selling out lately and I was really excited to see her yarn in person. So I stopped by the pop-up and um, picked up this skein. This, so this is Ocean by the Sea. It is her bloom base, which is 100% Falkland. It's non-superwash. Uh, it's an Aran weight and um, it's the Beachcomber colorway. It's just this beautiful, minty green color and it's so springy and so delightful and this is so oh it's just so squishy and nice so i'm not entirely sure what i'm going to make with this yet but i thought it would be really nice for an accessory if you have ideas for nice plump air and weight patterns i would love to hear them like what would you make with this the one yarny thing i was actually on the lookout for at the marketplace was some yarn for um the contrast color for a pattern called blomsterjacke so Blomsterjacke is a pattern released by Sonnes. It's designed by Anita Bratterland. Um, it's a really beautiful colorwork cardigan. And um, I was given some Garth Noor Shetland uh, from the Espace Trico ladies last year that I thought I would like to use for that. But I just needed a contrasting color. So I was on the, on the lookout for a nice fingering weight yarn that I could use um, with my gray Garth Noor. And here is what I got for that. This is, again, naturally dyed, which seems to be something of a theme this year in my purchases. So this is this is naturally dyed Finnish wool from Auden Kokera in Finland. And it's just a beautiful, vibrant pinkish color, um, sort of a raspberry pink. And uh, this isn't what I was expecting to go for for this cardigan, but I think it's going to be beautiful with the gray. Um, I don't know when I'll be getting around to casting it on, but now I have the yarns, both of the yarns, for the Blomsterjacke, so that's very exciting. This one was dyed with, um, let's see, this is the Malva colorway, and it was dyed with lac. Um, one of the very cool things about Anna's labels is that everything she dyes with is on the label, and she crosses off whatever was not used for that skein. So this one was lac dye, as you can see right here. 
you should definitely check her out. All of her colorways were so beautiful, and she also does some really fun variegated skeins as well with her natural dyes. Oh, and this came from the Midwinter Yarns booth. I stopped by the booth where um, Saskia from Yavol was uh, to say hi to her, and she was also sharing a booth with um, Ovis etc., who's also Saskia, and then the dyer for Yavol is also Saskia, so they were three Saskias in one booth, which I really enjoyed. Um, but I was just completely drawn to one of the yarns in um, the Ovis etc. side, and I've heard a lot about Ovis etc. before. I know Ellie of Skandir has knit with their yarns, um, and so I was really interested to check it out and see. And I kind of immediately gravitated towards a corner where uh, there were a bunch of skeins of a non-superwash high twist Corydale. So it's 100% Corydale, and there was one color that I just couldn't leave behind. And that was this. So if you know me, this is very predictable. It's a beautiful teal. It's a very blue-green. But just look at the shine on this yarn. It's so gorgeous. I just couldn't not buy any. So I got one skein. I got the label here. Um, and you can see Corydale Twist. So it's 400 meters and 100 grams. It's a really nice fingering weight. Um, it is UK Corydale, which is excellent as well. And you'll notice I've already wound this up into a ball. Um, and that is because I've already started a project with it. I just couldn't wait to get my hands on it. Um, and that is this. You'll notice there's no needles here, even though it's not finished. I just have my loop, and that's because this is a crochet project. So this pattern is uh, called, it's just called Fingerless Gloves. It's by Michael von Kurt. Uh, I hope that's right. Dutch is not one of my languages. Um, but it is a free pattern on Ravelry. It's available in English, Finnish, and Dutch, I think. Um, and in English, it's both US and UK crochet terms are available. Um, but yeah, this is something that's been in my favorites for years. And I thought that this yarn might make some pretty nice um, fingerless mitts. And so when I was browsing Ravelry for pattern ideas, I normally have knit and crochet turned on and this popped up because I selected in my favorites and I thought, oh, yeah, maybe I'll try that. At first, I wasn't sure about how it was working up in this pattern, but seeing it on camera is actually really helpful and I think it's looking OK. Um, I'm not the biggest crocheter. I do know how to crochet. In fact, I've even released a pattern now that combines knit and crochet. Um, but I want to get better at it and I want to do more of it. Um, part of why I don't do it as much is that I'm not as good at it. I don't know as much about crochet as I do about knitting. And so when I start a project, I get a little frustrated that it's not as automatic. Um, this has required a lot of concentration for me, to be perfectly honest. But I do want to get better, and the only way to get better is by doing it. That's a start on that. We'll see when I have time to finish that. But I think that's going to be really beautiful in this yarn, and I will definitely have some of this left over as well. The last little bit of yarn that I picked up came from the Solda booth, and it was sort of an impulse purchase. I was buying a couple of books because she had a really fantastic selection of books. Not only um, knitting books, of course she had great knitting books, but um, they also had a selection of books from Lighthouse Books that were more about sort of different topics dealing with diversity and inclusion and racism and homophobia and all of that kind of stuff. A lot of really fantastic reads. So I was buying a couple of books and it was the very last minute of the weekend and I just thought, oh, I don't want to not buy yarn. And I gave into the impulse purchase and came on with two skeins of Sulia because predictable. So again, this is the same yarn that my green yarn in my lap wing, which I'm wearing, is. Um, I love this yarn so much. Um, and my thinking was that I could use this with two skeins of Sulia I have in my stash that are in the reddish beige, really beige colorway, um, probably in something striped. And with four of them, I'll have plenty of yarn to make a nice sized garment. Um, so yeah, two of those. This colorway is uh, turquoise, which is turquoise. And there you have it. That is what I purchased or was given at the festival. So I think I've been sitting here chatting for long enough, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off and leave you with the vlog footage. Thank you so much for watching, and if you'd like to know when new videos go up, the best way to do that is to subscribe to this channel, um, since I don't have any kind of regular schedule. 
But either way, I hope to see you in the comments, I hope to see you in the Ravelry group, and I will see you very soon. Bye. everybody. I just got to my Airbnb for the weekend here in Edinburgh. I had a red-eye flight last night. I slept about two hours on it, I think. Um, connected in London and then had another flight to get up here. So I'm a little tired. I've definitely got that like, um, you know, when you just feel like you're covered in travel grime. I'm really looking forward to taking a shower, but I'm at the apartment now so I can sort of take a deep breath and relax. Today is the Thursday. So the marketplace is open until five, maybe, maybe 5.30, I think it's five. Um, and then the big knit night is tonight and I do have a ticket for that. So I think at least I'll be going to the knit night and if I can get over to the marketplace before it closes, I think that would be really nice. Um, but I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna be worth it if I only have, you know, an hour or 45 minutes or something and I, have to pay uh, to get in when I have tickets for tomorrow and Saturday already. So we'll see. But um, either way, I'm looking forward to getting over to the Corn Exchange and just seeing lots of people while deliriously tired because I didn't sleep very much last night. But I know I'm not alone in that respect. But anyway, I haven't talked to you guys yet. There were some clips of um, getting here. Um, but... Um, yeah, I love Edinburgh and I'm so happy to be here and I will be even happier to talk to you again once I'm cleaned up. So I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> I would show you all that I pulled out the knitwear that I brought to put on hangers and then decided that I wanted to put the hangers on the frames here. The art is fine, it's like little feather illustrations, but to be honest, I like the knitwear better. Um, and I think it's really funny to see it all like this. So, this one, and this is the Brunsfield vest by Isolde Teague, and I knit this in Rama Finu. You've probably seen this on my channel before if you've watched my Norwegian wool video. This is the Mount Pleasant Tee by Megan Nodecker. I knit it in yarn from Garnsur, um, the dye company in Norway with uh, refugee women do the dyeing. And this one is my not quite finished lap wing, which has been on my Instagram recently. It's a pattern by Marie Wallen and I again use Norwegian wool for this one. So I have an unintentional Norwegian theme with these pieces, but you know what? I'm not sad about it. I brought one more sweater as well, but um, it's in the living room, so. Okay, I've had a shower and I feel so much more human now. It's a lot better. But I was looking into the knit night ticket and it turns out that that comes with access to the marketplace from four o'clock. And I think it might actually be about four o'clock now. And it goes until 5.30 tonight. So I am gonna get my bag together and try and scoot over to the marketplace and just like, do a quick loop or something before it closes for the day and then I'll be able to just hang out until the knit night actually kicks off at six. So, time to go.
state of things. It's about 7.30 in the morning. I woke up an hour ago. I have some tea with my lapwing card or sweater. It's not a cardigan. And I took this to the big knit night last night. I finished seaming the second sleeve and I've cast on for the neck. So this morning I'm going to finish the neck and then I can block it and hopefully wear it tomorrow on the Saturday, which is the day I wanted to wear it to begin with. So that's the plan for that. I'm a little tired, but at least I've got a cup of tea. I'm getting ready to watch Heidi, AKA Books and Cables, Heidi's vlog from yesterday. She's been doing daily vlogs. I'll link to them in the description box if you wanna take a look. She's been doing extra traveling around the festival as well. So. There's some stuff from the Highlands and all kinds of stuff, but Heidi was at my table at the knit night last night, so I might actually be in this vlog working on this sweater. Um, but I've been enjoying her vlogs, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get caught up. Um, and yeah, that's the current, current state of things. It's morning. And here she is. I've just soaked my finished lap wing. I finished the neckline and wove in all the ends. I've just put, the neckline is flaring a tiny bit, so I've just put this coaster here to kind of weigh it down. <laughs> Very professional. Um, I have never felt the need to have one of the traditional Shetland blocking boards, but this sweater could really use it. Um, but yeah, it's looking really nice now that it's been washed and um, my cut edges have held up. These were reinforced with hand stitching or hand sewed a reinforcement on my steeks at the armholes and my little neck steek as well. Um, so hopefully, I'm gonna leave this drying today, and hopefully I will be able to wear this to the festival tomorrow. Marie Wallen actually has a stand at the marketplace, and I would love to show it to her in person, on my person, so yeah, gosh. I kind of can't believe I knit that. Do you ever feel that way about things you've made? Like, wait, I did that? How did I do that? I'm not totally sure. But I'm very in love and I hope that um, it's relaxed a little bit with blocking and the fabric has gotten a little bit less stiff. This is a pretty tight fabric. So we'll see. Hopefully I'll be able to show you all tomorrow.
<laughs> Have it come. That's, that's the important part. <laughs> yeah. I have, I have. Are you ready to eat the food? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So hungry. Yes. Speed winding going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna regret my my bet for 25 minutes. <laughs> He's powering through, but you gotta pace yourself to make it to the end. Woo! Also, how beautiful is this yoke? It is so pretty. <laughs> Grace, Grace has an aura. <laughs> It is sunny and beautiful this morning. Look at that sky. Good morning all, it is Sunday morning. Um, today is the Make Wool event, the last official event of the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. The main festival is now over. Uh, so today is a smaller marketplace with um, especially woolly vendors, a lot of small farms, small companies, um, breed specific type things, yarn, weaving, fabric, ceramics, just you know, a smaller, more local kind of thing, which is really nice. Um, so I know there's a few people who are going to be there who I'll see. Um, said goodbye to a lot of people already. But um, but yeah, I it's been uh, just a jam-packed, crazy weekend, so I haven't pulled my camera out very much. But I'm going to do one last hurrah today and see if I can get some of Make Wool for you to see, especially if uh, you weren't at the festival, but if you were at the festival and you're not here, you know, going to the event today. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm off to. It actually started an hour ago and it's only four hours today. Um, so I uh, need to get over there, but I thought I'd very quickly show you because I've finished my, my lap wing. So if you've been following my progress, the saga of this sweater, um, 
I did wear it yesterday because uh, it was finished blocking, but I thought I'm gonna wear it again today because I didn't spend very much time at the marketplace yesterday before I had to get to a class. So I'm so happy with how it turned out. And I love these colors. So this is a pattern by Marie Wallen and the green yarn is Hilles Vogue Solia. Um, and the sort of light gray contrasting color is uh, Raume Lamulgarn, which is their lamb's wool. So it's two Norwegian wools. I had the chance to show Marie Wallen um, yesterday, which was really nice. Maybe I'll give you a quick look other than just me holding the camera. So here she is, ta-da! Like I said, I am so pleased with it. So I am gonna get my coat on, I'm gonna get over to the corn exchange and um, hopefully I'll see you in a little bit.